Hello, welcome to my third and final video today, or just next video if you're watching it, on the immune system. Right now, this can be a very confusing topic, and I think the books do it awfully. They do, they're all over the place, you never know what order. I'll try to do it in a good order here. And yeah, so, hope you enjoy. So, immune system is made out of two main, or well, three main areas. The primary defence, the non-specific secondary defence, and the specific secondary defence. The primary defense is very simple, skin, blocks out most things, mucous membranes, so you know if you have the uh, lining of the throat, you have cilia and goblet cells, goblet cells uh, produce mucus, traps particles and pathogens, cilia wafts it up to the back of the throat, you swallow it, digest it in your stomach. Simple. Tears, tears contain antibodies which help the eyes, protect the eyes, earwax and the ears, yet again, that uh, traps pathogens, and acidic conditions, particularly in the vagina, because obviously that's quite a big opening, um, it can maintain, it maintains relatively acidic conditions which kill many pathogens. That's all the primary defence is. Now the secondary defence works on antibodies and antigens, so this is what the definitions are. Antibody, a protein molecule that can identify and neutralize antigens. Antigen, a molecule that stimulates an immune, immune response. Immune response, a body's reaction to a foreign antigen. That's all they are. And this is an antibody. Yes, you need to know the structure. Antibody, so things, there's at the top a variable region. This is different for each antibody and what makes it specific. But there's a constant region which makes it not specific. Well, it's constant for all antibodies and this helps antibodies to attach to all pathogens in your body all sorry not pathogens all phagocytes and other things because um for example let's say a b lymphocyte has antibodies on its cell membrane and the constant region helps bind them and then the actual antibody itself consists of a heavy polypeptide chain and a light polypeptide chain the heavy one goes from the bottom all the way up. It's the one that's closer to the top, and the light ones are just at the, are shorter. And that's the kind of lower side of the antibody. Now, in the variable region, there is an antigen binding site. This is where the antigens bind to. And you also have a hinge region. That's how you get the Y shape. And the hinge regions and other bits of the antibodies contain disulfide bridges. So those little dashes are disulfide bridges. Simple. And Antibodies work in four ways, you only need to know about two. Neutralization, which, so what you have is you have yellow is an antibody, blue is an antigen. So one antigen will have kind of loads of antibodies swamp it and stop it from working. Those bits of the yellow stuff is on, the yellow antibodies are on, are the bits of the antigens would attach to the cells before getting in. So it prevents them from working. Or you have agglutination. That's when one giant antibody gets loads of small, small anti pathogens or small pan pathogens and antigens to attach to it, and then something like a ph phagocyte will come and digest it. Again, just nothing too hard here. And this is a phagocyte. I decided just to draw the picture. Um, this is a neutrophil. There's neutrophils and macrophages. Neutr they're they're pretty much the same, but man um, macrophages are larger and manufactured in the bone marrow. They settle in kind of organs, lymph nodes, anywhere like that. And they more help in a specific region. If you look at number five, that's more for a macrophage than a neutrophil. And you can tell if it's a neutrophil or a macrophage. Neutrophils have a kind of lobed nucleus, the big blue blob. It's a lobed nucleus. It means it can fit through like single cell capillary walls because it can kind of go into a very flat shape and fit through. So what happens? Step one, an antigen will attach to receptors found on the phagocytes, I'll call, I'll call it phagocytes, to include neutrophils and macrophages. The pathogen with antigens attached to the receptors on the phagocyte. This will then create a phagocytic vesicle which will kind of engulf it. This is endocytosis or it can be called phagocytosis as well. So a little phagocytic vesicle, that's number two, contains the antigen. 
and goes into the cell. And number three, lysosomes attach to the phagocytic vesicle and release the powerful hydrolytic enzymes. Step four, this digest it into small bits, small harmless bits. Now, in a neutrophil, nothing much happens. It's just digested. In a macrophage, at step five, these bits of antigen are presented onto the cell wall for other lymphocytes to come and detect. This is called an antigen presenting cell, APC. That's what it is. APC is basically a macrophage. And this is used in a specific immune a specific, specific immune system. So if a certain disease comes in, it can present that disease to all the white blood cells so you can get over it. So phagocyte, these are all white blood cells. T lymphocytes, so they bind to APCs. Now they have complementary receptors. That's important. T lymphocytes have receptors and these can bind to the antigens that are presented on a macrophage. Complementary ones, so there will be thousands of different T lymphocytes in your body. Only only a few of them will be specific to one antigen, but you have to have thousands to get all the different diseases. So one so one T lymphocyte that happens to have the correct complementary shape for an antigen will bind to it. And will then this is clonal selection. This is choosing which lymphocytes you need. It will then this is replication and by mitosis. And this is called clonal expansion. They kind of replicate again and again and again into different types of T cells. You have T helper cells, T killer cells, T memory cells. T memory cells are just there to remember. So there'll be a few more of them now in the body just to remember that antigen so it can react quicker. You have T killer cells. These attach directly to the pathogen and destroy it. And T helper cells which release cytokines. These cytokines or cytokines will then attract and activate B cells or B lymphocytes. And that's basically what T lymphocytes do. Now, B cells, B lymphocytes, very similar to T lymphocytes. Now, they bind to APCs or just antigens on a pathogen. Because B lymphocytes don't have receptors, they have antibodies. They have complementary antibodies. It's a slight difference. And the same thing happens then. So they are selected, clonally selected, clonally expanded. But they expand into plasma cells and B memory cells. B memory cells are very similar to T memory cells. They just fly around or float around and remember. But plasma cells are what actually release that specific antibody. So a B cell binds, with a specific antibody, binds to a pathogen so you know you have that disease. It will then go, okay, we need more, 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 get loads of B cells, and then it will expand into plasma cells. These will release all the antibodies that will then attack the pathogen and destroy it. And so if you're asked what cell produces antibodies, plasma cells, not B lymphocytes. And here's a diagram of how it all works. So I'll go through it because it's kind of just a colour of orange and yellow for most people. So step one you have a pathogen and then what happens is the pathogen can either go and be from left to right and go into a phagocyte or a macrophage or it can actually go and infect a cell or it can just stay there as a pathogen now if it infects a macrophage then the T cells will find it and that's then it'll be clonally selected if it's a pathogen, only B cells can get to it. If it's infected cell, infected cells will automatically present antigens. Then it could be T cells or B cells that pick it up. Then clonal expansion. So you've got clonal selection is when the correct one is chosen. Then you have clonal... No, sorry, step four is clonal selection. So they're all being chosen. So you're now getting lots more of T of all the T cells you want and the B cells you want, and then it's clonal expansion into plasma cells, B memory cells, T memory cells, and obviously T killer cells and T helper cells are already there. And that's very simple. And here's a graph of what happens. So, yet again, these, this this is five, six points. This isn't from the previous picture, it's a different one. Step one, you've been infected. Now, if you notice, there's a lag from step one to step two. Step two is when you start producing antibodies. Now, why does that happen? 
The lag happens because it takes a while for the pathogen to be recognized, for clonal selection to happen. T cells have to respond to the antigen the presented, then clonal selection happens, clonal expansion happens of the specific T and B cells with the receptors, and this all happens. So that takes time. Then at two, you at two it rises till you've got enough at three, which is when the pathogen is gone. So you don't need as many of these antibodies anymore. So it goes down. Now let's say you're infected again. So you Let's say you've got the disease, you go to school, give it to other people, get better, but then they give it back to you. So this time, if you notice, there's still a little bit of a lag before the sudden increase. A little bit of time, but since you've got memory cells, memory cells are produced by clonal expansion. The memory cells recognise the pathogen and it all happens a lot quicker. But this time, much more antibodies are produced. And so it goes completely up. And if you notice, there's a little line which is above the maximum limit of um, the first infection. First section yellow, second infection blue. And this is when you're immune to disease. You won't get it anymore. You won't show any symptoms at all. So prime infection, you show the symptoms, you combat the disease. Then, second time you get it, memory cells activate, you get millions of antibodies, loads more, and that goes way above the immune, the uh, yeah, when you're immune, and it slowly decreases over time. You get the immunity for a much longer time about 10 years, you'll be immune for the second time. That's why, if you are having an injection for a vaccine, you'll often be given it twice. So, the first time you'll get the memory cells, the second time they'll be kept for much longer. And that's how you work, that's how it works. You need to know how to talk about that graph, and that's it. Yet again, not a very long video. Questions. State the name of the cells that produce antibodies. Explain why there is a delay between time of infection and appearance of antibodies in the blood. And explain why the person is unlikely to get the symptoms of the disease again. And the answers are A. Plasma cells, not B. Lymphocytes, plasma cells. B. T lymphocytes respond to the antigen presentation. Clonal selection of specific T and B cells with receptors or antibodies and clonal expansion by mitosis. This all takes time before the antibodies, because remember it's not until the clonal expansion that the plasma cells which emit antibodies appear. So it takes time. Explain why the person is unlikely to get symptoms of the disease again, because there are memory cells present. And the secondary response is fast and also provides greater antibody production quicker rate. And that's it. In conclusion, the immune system, primary defense, skin, mucous membranes, tears, earwax and acidic conditions, secondary defenses, phagocytes, lymphocytes and antibodies which all respond to antigens. And that's all you need to know. Thanks for listening. So sorry these last three videos have been rushed. If there's anything, if they haven't been as good as normal, please tell me. If there's anything I've missed out you want me to cover, I'll be more than happy to. And yeah, just tell me. I don't care if you tell me I'm crap, because I might be. But please just leave comments, feedbacks, likes, if I'm good enough, dislikes, if you think I'm not doing a good job. Subscribe, tell your friends as usual, email me with any questions, what videos you want to do next. I know someone emailed me asking if I could do um, one on end times, which I will do in the next two days. Um, I just felt since I haven't done one over the weekend, because um, I was up in London, um, I decided to do three to make up for it now one for saturday one for sunday one for monday but as i say they went a little bit quickly but hopefully i hope you enjoyed them any comments please just say yeah keep those views coming thank you and goodbye